Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to be a quick video talking about over 20 games that you have a choice to play during the holiday season. This is not a PlayStation exclusive video. It is going to be multi-platform, but since all these games can be played on PlayStation, I'm going to use screenshots from PlayStation. Um, also, I'm going to break the video down into three segments. One, the games that I'm currently playing. Two, the most popular games that people are playing. And then three, maybe some games that are not so popular, but are still worth playing. So before we get started, please like, subscribe, it helps out our channel, and uh, we'll keep making great content. Let's get started. All right, first up, Citadel Forged with Fire. Obviously, this is the game that I'm playing right now. This is the one I'm posting the most about. It's a lot of fun. I think that a general audience will like this game. It's a wizard game with monsters, tames, dragons, base building, open world sandbox, raiding, PvP, PvE, all of that stuff. Um, and I think it's a great pick for less than $40 US. Up next, I'm also playing Elite Dangerous. This is a really chill game. It's a space simulator. It's not for everyone. Um, if you like space and you think playing a space simulator would be for you, then maybe pick it up. But just be forewarned that it is for a very specific group of people. Uh, up next, the first game I'm going to talk about that people are playing is Grand Theft Auto Online. This game has not really... Um, it, it's kind of an ageless game. People love playing this online. It's also got a great single player, but there's so much to do online in this game that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Up next is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's a single player game, and depending on how much you game you can probably beat the campaign in a couple days maybe two or three days but if you only play a few hours a day then yeah that game's gonna last you quite some time uh, the first one is apex legends it's an open world battle royale pvp game similar to all the other ones that are out there the difference is this one focuses more on classes i don't play this uh up next the king of games fortnite i don't play fortnite either but um it is the most popular game and uh, it's a battle royale open world. It's free to play as well. So if you like shooting and open world stuff, give it a shot. Um, and then up next is going to be the beloved Call of Duty, one of the longest running franchises in video game history. And, uh, you know, this is very popular right now. You either like Call of Duty or don't. So there's not really much to say uh, there. And then up next is going to be Destiny 2. I love Destiny. I kind of got burned out on it. But again, um, this game is, you know, it's an awesome game, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the game is free to play now, so, you know, check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. I'm almost positive it's free to play. Um, up next is Battlefront 2. This is EA's kind of dirty secret along with Anthem, of course, but they've really fixed this game up. I've heard a lot of good things. I'm probably going to end up playing this game at some point during my break, um, but something definitely to check out. Maybe watch some streams and see if it is something you would be interested in playing now. All right, now we're gonna get to the less popular games that I'm going to suggest. This section is gonna be a little bit longer. Um, and if I pull up a game that you've already played or you're not interested in, just skip to the next game. So first I'm gonna talk about Paladins. Yes, Paladins is, I don't wanna call it a rip off of Overwatch, but genre wise, it's pretty identical. Um, a few key differences is I believe Paladins is free. Pretty sure it's free. But not just that it's free, but to me, I, I prefer Paladins just because I feel like the characters have more identity and you have more individual contribution than Overwatch, but that's just my opinion. Um, but if you like Overwatch, you should like Paladins, but then again, it's it's hard to tell sometimes, but I really do enjoy it. Um, up next is Dark Souls 3. If you've never played Dark Souls, um, Dark Souls 3 is a great place to start because I think it's a little more forgiving and it's a lot more modern than the other Dark Souls. I've played all the Dark Souls, I've played Bloodborne, Sekiru, uh, you know, I've played all the games in that genre. And I think for that specific genre, Dark Souls 3 is probably the best pick. Um, and honestly, I love, you know, it's a, it's a game that I love. It's a game I've played with my girlfriend. She loves it. You can play co-op, you can play online. It's PvP, PvE. And, um, you know, if you haven't played it yet, check it out. It could be your game for the holiday season. Um, up next is Seven Days to Die. This isn't going to be a game that um, you're going to play for weeks and weeks and weeks. At least I wouldn't think so. But it is a cool game to check out. I, I don't remember the price, but it's not that much. 
Um, and it's kind of like an open world zombie game where you can build houses and everything. It's not the highest quality game, but it is pretty good and it's fun. It's unique. It's a unique survival game. Um, honestly, I like it a lot. I think it's a really neat game. And if the price is right for you, if you like zombie survival games and you like fighting hordes of zombies and trying to like salvage uh, weapons and stuff, definitely check it out. Uh, the next one's Warframe. Uh, you may have downloaded this at some point. It's free to play. It's multi-platform. Um, but it is a lot of fun for a while. To me, it gets it gets really old because the content is very redundant down the road. But if you just need something to play for a couple of days and you're strapped on cash, honestly, Warframe, it's a it's a good game to play. It's fun. It's fast-paced. Um, the graphics are modern. You know, everything about it as a free game, you know, really sticks out. Up next is The Witcher 3. Um, this game, obviously a lot of people are going to play it because The Witcher uh, just came out on Netflix. But The Witcher 3 is probably one of the best single player experiences of all time. It's a really great game. I've sunk in so many hours into it and there's so much to do and it's fun. Um, and if you haven't played it yet and you like the RPG genre at all, you don't have to have any experience with any Witchers. You can pick up Witcher 3 and play it. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it to any gamer that likes anything remotely close to an RPG. Up next is DC Universe Online. Um, you may or may not know, I played this game for like three years straight. Um, it's an interesting game. It's definitely in its uh, you know league of its own. Um, the only thing I would say is it is a bit dated now, and that's one of the issues I have with it. But if you're strapped on cash, it's free to play. Um, you can play up to the Tier 2 endgame for free, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it is an action MMORPG, and if a lot of people look at this game, they're like, I don't really want to play as Superman or Batman or whatever, but that's actually not what it is. You create your own character, you get to choose the power set. Um, it's something worth looking into, and if you have questions about it, ask me. But if you've never played it, you're strapped on cash, you've got nothing to play, just download it and commit a day to playing it. It's actually a really fun game. Up next is Ark Survival Evolved. Again, another game that you guys know that I've played for a long time. Um, but it's a really fun game, and again, it's a unique genre. It's a survival game, and the focus is around basically these dinosaurs. And they have other creatures than dinosaurs now. But that is like the focal point of the game. Um, it's a lot of fun. Even if you want to play like on a custom server or PVE or whatever, they have so many different options. Again, if you have questions about that, ask in this video and I'll answer them. I am pretty much an expert on that game. I, I played official PvP for two years. I was in, you know, I was in multiple Mega Tribes, did it all. Um, and so that is a game that I think it's a general audience game because it's so unique that I think anyone would like it. And we, we loved playing that game, so definitely check that out. Up next is Minecraft. Obviously, this is like one of the most popular games of all time, definitely in the top 20, but a lot of people don't download it because of like the low quality graphics or whatever. And I was the same way when Minecraft first came out. I was like, that looks really bad. Why would I want to play that? And honestly, Minecraft at the beginning is so addicting that you'll you'll look past that i promise you i know it's hard to believe but you will look past the blocks and the graphics once you start playing it and it's a lot of fun and i think it's a general audience game as well um and it's not just for kids trust me you know grown people play this too um speaking of minecraft we're gonna talk about boundless it's kind of like minecraft i haven't played it um but i have some friends who are addicted to it um and it has the pvp elements and everything i think it's just more of a mature type of Minecraft. Um, it's something I would like to try eventually, but it also looks like a game that you've got to sink some hours into, and it's not something you know, I don't have time for, uh, but definitely something to check out. Um, and then Borderlands 3, and some people might get salty and be like, this is this should have been in the popular list. It is popular, but it's not as popular as it should be. Um, but the great thing about Borderlands 3 is you know, you've probably heard of the Borderlands series and you may or may not have played. If you've played Borderlands and you liked Borderlands, then you're probably already playing Borderlands 3 or plan to play it. But if you haven't played Borderlands, there's no reason not to hop in on 3. Um, just You could just buy 3 if that's the type of game you want to play. It's like a very quasi um, RPG, gun game, customization. Um, it's got 
tons of RPG elements, PvE, PvP, all the good stuff. You can watch some videos on it, but definitely keep that in mind. If you like shooters and you're looking for something interesting that's not Call of Duty or Fortnite, um, Borderlands 3 could definitely give you that. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about Dreams. Now, this is a PlayStation exclusive, and it's in um, early access. This is... So there's two sides to this game. Um, this is a tool for creating games, basically, um, which are your dreams. And so the side, you know, one side of it is you can create and share games, and then the other side of it is you can play other people's games that they've created. Um, and I think it's like 40 bucks. It might be less. Um, I, I picked it up. Honestly, it's a really neat game. It's not something that you're necessarily going to be die hard investing your time in but if you want something relaxing to play um and to check out some different things you know dreams is really neat and i do recommend you pick it up all right last but certainly not least is final fantasy 14 and no this is not in my current games i'm playing list i'm not playing 14 right now but let me tell you a few things about this game one this is my favorite game of all time i think it's one of the best games of all time but there's a flip side to that. You do have to invest time in this game in order for it to pay off. If you want to hop on this game and you think, you know, you're like, hey, I'll give it a go. And you only put an hour or two in this game. You're not, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to get addicted to it. This is a game that you have to invest like that full day in to really get the grasp of it. Because it is a very deep and complex game. At first, obviously, once you start playing it, it's a lot simpler. Um, but it does take an investment. You can't just pick it up and immediately fall in love with it. You've, there's a huge learning curve, but it's very rewarding in the long run. This game has so much to offer. Um, I just, I can't even express to you how awesome this game is. One of the one of my favorite things about this game versus other MMO RPGs is that you only need one character and you can do everything you can play all the classes you can do all the crafting you can do everything with one character and other games make you have multiple characters and that's one of the big selling points for me for this game and why it's hard for me to play any other MMO RPG because the quality of this MMO is so high that when you play any other MMO RPG it just honestly it just feels like a lesser game um, and so, again, if you have questions about Final Fantasy XIV, please ask me. It's an awesome game. It's super addicting. But outside of getting your weekly currency, it's another game that you don't have to commit to playing every single day, which is what I like about it. It's not like a survival online PvP game where you have to play every day or you're going to lose your stuff. Um, and I say all that just to say this is a great game. If you're looking for something to... Um, you know, to invest some time in during the holidays and then play steadily after that, this would be the perfect game for that. Post your questions below. I'm sorry if I didn't mention any games. I have to mention the games that I can speak to, and that's what I did. And I hope everyone has a great holiday season. Um, it's a great season for gaming. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and until next time.